Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. We are here this morning for a celebration of life. Cheryl K. Johnson, 11 a.m., April 13th, 2024, here at Christ Nations Church, 600 Soul Lane, Texarkana, Texas, 75503. Yours truly, Pastor Irene Pete Petrie, officiating. The order of service will proceed as follows. Uh, after we introduce the order of service, we will move forward, uh, and you will no longer see me again until time of the eulogy. But we will have first an Old Testament uh, scripture by Pastor Cedric Weatherall, followed by New Testament scripture from Minister Iwana Rockwell. Following that will be a prayer by Minister Tina Body Greer. Following that will be also a song of celebration by Christ Nations Church. Now, following this, there will be a time where there is a video tribute that is played. And it is precisely during this time in which the video tribute is played that you may read the obituary in silence and read it there during the time of the video. Following that will be resolutions and acknowledgments by Sister Janice Jameson. Following that will be remarks in which at that time when we call for remarks from the floor after Elder Greer has come forth with some of the immediate family, we're asking that all of those who have remarks will come up at one time and you will come to my left, you're right on the floor and there will be a mic provided for you to give your remarks at that time. Following that, there will be a song of praise by Brother Wayne Monroe, the eulogy then by yours truly, and then finally the final glimpse in which we will be in the care of the funeral directors in charge, and finally there will be the recessional of all parties involved and the family. Amen. We will have Pastor Cedric Weatherall. Good afternoon. Praise the Lord. Father, we just thank you. Scripture for today in the Old Testament will come from Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. It says, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under the sun or in the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to wheat and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. from the King James Version of the Bible, Romans 8, verses 35 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or phantom, or nakedness, or pearl, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And may our God add a blessing to those who hear and do his most holy word. Yes. 
Stand on your feet while we pray, amen. This is a celebration, so you can't pray to a God that you don't know. So for, before we pray, can you just lift your hands and tell them on your own, thank you. So Father God, we do, we just do it right there. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you've already done. And here's what we know, God, that this was your idea. We thank you, God, because your word says before she lived out one day, you had already ordained every step. And we declare, God, that in this place, we thank you because the steps of a good man are ordered by God. God, we thank you that your word is scripted so well that what Psalms 139 says that there was no place that she could ever go that you were not there. So God, we thank you for being there. We thank you that you were there when she didn't even know that you were there. You were there when we didn't know that you were there. And for that, we give a holy God a holy praise. God, we thank you because you're bigger than what we thought you could ever be. On the days that we didn't see any hope, you saw through the future. And God, we are here to celebrate that today. God, we thank you that it did not appear to us what it could be. And it still does not today, but we celebrate in advance for what you've already done. We thank you for the legacy of Cheryl K. Johnson. We thank you, God, that there is absolutely nothing that she could have ever done that you did not ordain. God, we thank you that good shall come from this. We declare that we're more than conquerors because of this moment. We declare, God, that there were simply some things that we shall never fight again. And we thank you, God, that just as she has, we're overcoming in this room by the blood of the Lamb. So, God, for our family today, we thank you for the strength that holds mountains together. We will not bow. We will not crumble to death because it does not have victory. So, God, in this room, we thank you that you are healing every heart that you're healing every mind, that you're eliminating all trauma. We thank you, Father God, that there is absolutely no weapon formed against us that can prosper. So with our own mouths, we declare that we are satisfied. With our own mouth, we declare that life forevermore is our portion. Come on, I need you to pray. With our own mouth, we declare that this seed that went in the ground shall never die. And that it will do what you have declared for it to do. It will produce what you said it could produce. God, we don't look at the seed as a human, but we know that it came from you. So we declare in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, that what man thought he could do, yeah, what disease thought he could do, what drugs thought he could do, it could not. Because <laughs> she's more than a conqueror. Come on, God, I thank you that because of her today, we can shout in this room, victory, come on and do it, that we are more than conquerors, God. We are more than able to conquer any mountain and overcome anything. So, God, we thank you. Come on and do it. We thank you. And our prayer is, is that you're our God and that we are your people and that the words you wrote is not to just the church, but it's to your people. And because it's to your people, we say yes and amen. Come on, we say yes and amen. Put your hands together and bless God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you are good and we will worship you forever. Amen. Lord, we magnify your name this morning and we continue to rejoice. Amen. Hallelujah. So we just ask that you just have a seat. Say, Lord, you are good.
Oh, oh, 
and it's from Christ Nation Church, Pastor Ivan Petrie. A resolution of respect for Cheryl K. Johnson. We, the family of Christ Nation Church, and our pastor humbly submit to the will of our Heavenly Father, who doeth all things well. Extend to Miss Johnson's family our deepest sympathy. The loving Father understands that our hearts are very heavy at this time. However, we want to encourage you to hold fast to the good times and the precious memories you shared with her. We encourage you to think of her as not gone from you, but just gone before you. We admonish you to lean into the arms of Jesus who can and will heal all sorrow. We have his blessed assurance that weeping may endure for a night, but joy shall come in the morning, and he will give you the peace of God that surpasseth all understanding. Respectfully and lovingly submitted the sixth day of April 2024, the officers and the members of Christ Nation Church and Ivan, Ivan Petrie, the pastor. We have one from Transformation Center International. 1111 Hazel Street, Texarkana, Texas 75501. Apostle Dennis and President Merlin Cook. Resolution, for the Lord himself will come down from heaven and with a loud command and with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God and the dead will rise first. After that, we who are still alive or in our left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet with the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encouraging each other with these words in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18. Whereas God, the sovereign Lord of glory, dispatched into the earthly realm of spiritual being, Commission to human experience of Shura K. Johnson. And whereas in his name, sovereign wisdom, he saw fit to call her into her eternal existence. And whereas she is beloved aunt of our dear apostle Tina Michelle Greer. Whereas we have been instructed in the word of God to moan with those who moan and comfort with those in need. Be it resolved that we humbly bow to the will of Elohim and commend to his care the heart of all who know and love Sherry K. Johnson and express our sincere sympathy to the entire Johnson family. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be entered into the historical archives of the Transformation Center International and a copy will be presented to the family, humbly submitted on this day, the 13th day of April, in the year of the Lord, 2024. Apostle Dennis Cook. And we also have a court. Uh, a mother's love is forever. She is with you in heart. She is with you in mind. She is with you in memory. You will still have her smile, her dream, for her life, and always her love forever. So very sorry for your loss. And this is from Paige A. Davis from Forney, Texas. And in the acknowledgement, we would like to thank Christ Nation Church, Pastor Iron Petrie, for your great service and hospitality. Special thanks to Haynes Memorial for your special care and attendance. We thank each of you for your prayers, your gifts, your cards, and all the kind gestures. Your loving kindness has made this difficult time more bearable. Perhaps you sent a lovely card, a set quietly in a chair. Perhaps you sent those beautiful flowers that we saw sitting there. 
Perhaps you spoke the kindest words, as any friend could say. Perhaps you were not there at all, just thought of us that day. And I also want to make acknowledgement to our Uncle Wilton and Nettie Chance from Dallas area. Thank you. Good morning. morning. It's a blessed day. <laughs> yes, it is. I did not intend to have a mic at all today, but you do what you have to do. Amen? I'm standing with Crystal, my niece, and Taylor Marie. Thank you. She knows what I call her. She's okay with it. Thank you. I'm with Taylor. It's okay if I call you Taylor Marie? I thought it was. Thank you. Um, and they have written something to, Taylor wrote, wrote something to her grand, to her mama, and Krista wrote something to her mom, and they didn't think they were able to say it, but I'm going to read it and stand with them, amen? Because amen. she can't hear them, but she, they want you to hear what they wrote, and I know you can read it in the program, but I'm going to read it for them, because it's their mama. And if I cry, y'all just cry with me, Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, I hope I can see to read it. I will remember you always the way you were. You were the best mama a granddaughter could have. I'm going to miss you. You're cooking my fried chicken and smothered potatoes, and she did a great job with it. Tuna without onions, because Taylor's so picky. And I will always remember how you would light up when I came into your room. I will never forget you. Give her hugs and kisses. <laughs> Love, Taylor Marie. And she would light up when she came into her room. To my mother, what can I say? Life if I, as I've known it will never be the same. I will definitely miss your conversation, your food, <laughs> and all of the good times we had together. You're one person for the record book. I will forever miss you, my best friend, yes, yes, my yes. mother, my everything. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> and that was from Taylor and Crystal. Yes. Amen. The one thing I said to Tamika, and I want to share with my family, because it's important that people know, the only debt that you owe each other is to love each other. That's, right. that's the only debt. And when we come before God, that's the debt. You're going to have to give an account of how you love people. It will not be measured on what you gave them, but on your love. Because God is love. And if you're saved, the love that you have in your heart is his love. It doesn't even belong to you. Amen. He loved you. He imparted his love in you, and you are to love your family and everybody else. I love my sister. She was my baby sister. She thought she was my baby, and she loved me, and that was enough for me. Uh, for the last five years, we spent a lot of time together, a lot. I even became her provider. Worked for a year and a half almost two years, and then I was a sister, a mama, whatever she calls me, I, I was that, but I told her I wasn't her mama, but I act like I was anyway, and that's all that matters to her. To Tamika, Crystal, Taylor, love you guys. Always been here for you, still will be. I never stop being your aunt. Amen? Good, bad, and ugly, I'm still your aunt. And I, we can all be, I mean, with her, with Taylor, with Chris, I mean, with Tamika, you'd be all of it. You have to. You have to. You, you just can't be that good out with her. That's okay. We put our we put our dish one. We put it out there. Everybody knows us anyway. But there are some people I want to thank. Number one, I want to thank Pastor Ira and my church. My God, 
You guys hold me up. I'm so appreciative. I thought I'd throw this nugget in. If you don't have a church home, <laughs> if you don't have a family of church people, you see, there's a commandment that God gave us that he would give us brothers and sisters, and you need those. House when everybody is hurting, you need somebody to help you that ain't, okay? Everybody crying, you need somebody that don't have a handkerchief in their hand. And I thank you guys. You cried with me, but you helped me up. You prayed for me, and you served me excellently. And I'm so appreciative. Everybody doesn't have that. I work with families that doesn't. Um, thanks to Class 76 as Sherry's class. If you're here, would you stand, please? Her classmates. All right. Thank you. They served us well on yesterday, too. Class of 74, which is my brother's class. We want to recognize you guys. Thanks. Thanks to my neighbor, community, uh, friends. Oh, you guys were awesome. And the reason I'm doing this today is I don't have your address, don't have your telephone number, and I can't send cards to everybody. But for those of that are public, I want to just tell you thank you, okay? Um, and Christian care. Uh, I'll say it out loud. My niece didn't put them on the program, but they served me and my sister. And, and they're alive today. I have a church there where I go once a month. And hey, I, I wanted to recognize them. They're watching. It's live. They're watching. And they needed closure. And I want to say I love you guys. Thank you. Cheryl loves you. She loves you dearly. There's some special people there that I want to recognize. I want to thank to all the directors and the staffs of Christian Carer for their service. To the kitchen, for those people who gave special orders to her when she didn't want to eat what she cooked. <laughs> to the physical therapist, Ken, she called your name every time you passed by her room. And for pushing that Jared chair that I could not handle. To Carlisa, what can I say? She never missed a bingo game. She couldn't use her hands, but she played two cards for her every game. Every time I go into her room and put up two bags, I come back and she's won three more. Thanks. Thank you that you never popped popcorn and somebody didn't feed it to her. Thank you that you never made ice cream. <laughs> somebody didn't give it to her. Thank you, Carlisa. Thanks for always making sure she was never left out. I want to say thanks to Miss Mary and Mr. Jack, who bought her more fruit than I could, fed her more soup than anybody. I want to say thanks to, I wrote this down because I didn't want to forget it. Thanks to Jose and the whole team at Christian Care. You were a blessing to her. You made her stay there a good one. And for all of you who came with us to celebrate today, I want to just say thanks for coming. A lot of your family and to my immediate family that just showed up and helped me and my brother. My brother here standing beside me, he was my Sunday sidekick. He fed her. And I'm going to tell you something really funny on Cheryl. Because she would tell her she got up at night and she walked around and she couldn't walk. And she'd tell me, it's in that drawer. It's in that refrigerator. And she couldn't see in there. So she would tell my brother when he came on Sundays what all she did. <laughs> and he would say, pick it up now. <laughs> what do you say, bro? Get it now. Get it now. Raise that hand. Get it. And, and I told him he was abusive too, but he really was. <laughs> he says, I want to see you do all this stuff that you do when ain't nobody here with you. <laughs> But, but, but the, the, I'm going to close by this. The Sunday that she passed, I, w I went out into the lobby, and one of the residents said, when I would take her food, she'd always roll in the room. And one time it was shrimp, and Cheryl will always, she was a giver. 
he wanted to share everything I brought. And I, she made me feel bad because I didn't bring two. Because she said, well, if my sister had known she was coming, I'd have told her to bring you one. Now, I'm buying, but she don't tell her to, me to bring her, because everybody in the resident one. So she had shrimp that day. So the lady rolled in the room. She said, you want some? She said, yeah, Miss Sherry, I'll be right back. Lady went down the hall, came back. Sherry ate all the shrimp. <laughs> lady came back. She said, well, you should have stayed in there and got it while you was here. Because my sister was feeding me, and I had just eaten what she was <laughs> But one of the representatives rolled up in the lobby and she said, Miss Pat, can I tell you something? And she says, it's a little strange, but can I tell you? I said, yeah, I always tell them, yeah, you can tell me anything. She said, we asked Sister Miss Sherry in the cafeteria, was she going to out for the eclipse? Because they took them out. They do everything. And she told them, no, I'm not going to be here. And so one of the other residents said, well, where are you going to be, Miss Sherry? You got a doctor's appointment. She told them, no, she was going to fly away. And so she did. She flew away. <laughs> that was on Sunday because they were getting ready for the eclipse on Monday. So she told them she was going to fly away. And it was several. They told Deborah. They told me. And I said, well, you know, he normally goes at 12. So he didn't get the memo. <laughs> he got a phone call that she had flown. <laughs> And so I asked him, I said, brother, you didn't come over at 12 because he takes a lunch or either feed or lunch. He said, no, sis, I didn't make it today. I said, well, you didn't get the memo. You got the phone call. So I want to just say to you, we got the memo. Sherry got the call. <laughs> so today we celebrate the memo. <laughs> because it was evident that she knew she was going to go before she went. <laughs> And she told the residents so they could tell us that she wasn't caught by surprise. She had already got a memo from heaven, and she wasn't around for the eclipse. <laughs> and she shared the message, I ain't going to be here, and she wasn't. And I, I, I celebrate that. Yeah, I miss her. I looked at my refrigerator, and I got all the containers that we fill up. And I told the containers, I said, I guess I'll throw you in the trash. My daughter said, no, I'll give them to me. But let me tell you something as I close. These every moment. These every moment to love. Because you don't know last time that it might be for you to love somebody. Choose every moment to say something kind. Because you can't retract your words. And you'll stand in the moment of wishing. And today I don't have to wish. <laughs> I serve myself evidence is there. My brother served her. We, we played. We, we had our days. We loved her. We served her. And we can say bye. See you later. Thank you. y'all doing? I appreciate everyone that is here. Uh, my mama was, nah, I'm good. My mom was one of a kind, okay? Um, I do want to say my mom had a legacy, me and my sister, because that's why people normally have children, to have a legacy, to have someone to love them unconditionally, regardless of the circumstances. And we was my mom family, through thick and thin, with no judgment, understand? So I do want to say I thank everyone for being here. My mom was very loved, Christian care. I thank y'all for whatever y'all did. Um, my wishes, my auntie up did them. Thank you, Jesus. Um, but she thanked y'all for everything y'all did, and that's that. Um, my aunties and uncles, I'm glad that y'all here. The other one. Um, I, I appreciate y'all for being here. Um, I, it ain't nothing personal. Yeah, excuse me, I'm shaking, because, you know, it's a lot to putting somebody away that had you, you know? When I have my birthday, I always called her, you know? Hey, thank you for having me, or I wanted to be there, you know? Even though I didn't live here, if she called me or had anybody to call me, I was coming to do whatever, because whoever, in Jesus' name. You heard me? Because that was my mama, and nobody else can replace that. I ain't ever in my life called anybody else mama. 
not even my grandmother, not even my aunties, because I won't ever confuse on who they were. My cousins always been my cousins. I always call my uncles, my uncles, my aunties, my aunties, because that's who they are. I respect them as who they are at all times, regardless of agreeing or disagreeing. But this lady right here, she gone. You hear me? But you see me right here and my sister, she ain't gone. Understand that, okay? The heart that I have, I got it from my mom. Because my mom loved folks unconditionally. Regardless of how they treated her, how they judged her, Sherry Kager loved her. That's the only thing I got from my mama, y'all, I'm telling you. Because if it wasn't, uh, hey, some of these folks I probably wouldn't even talk to if y'all only knew. But I have that heart. And I got Lily Mae in me, too. And my mom used to always remind me I wasn't her mama. So that's the type of relationship that we had. You know, I stayed on her. You know, I watched many things that transpired coming up. That's why I wrote in the program, these 36 years, I know God's been faithful. You hear me? She had an aneurysm in 2012, was able to walk away from it. You hear me? Had to learn how to do it all over again, and she did that. You know, she wanted me to have a baby. I didn't get to get now before she left up out of here. So I had to put this dress on for y'all, let you know that uh, she have a daughter, too. You hear me? She got two. You hear me? And my sister, I love her dearly. My niece, like, she got the grandbaby, and uh, I ain't mad. You hear me? Um, and that's just what that is. I got the dogs, though. If y'all want some dogs, just let me know. You hear me? But again, I do appreciate y'all. Ain't Lay Joyce, I thank you for coming. You know, I know it's hard. Well, I don't know it's hard, because I haven't took anything hard, because I know that I was a good daughter to my mama. You hear me? So I sit and I watch, I listen. Hey, bless y'all souls. You hear me? Because Sherry Kay was ready. She knew God. She knew him. Let me say it again. She knew him. Even when she was on her journey, she knew him. Understand? So it don't matter. Y'all just need to make sure y'all right with him. You hear me? Because uh, I ain't judging you. I don't care what you do. But make sure you right. Because I make sure I'm right. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of the fact. But again, uh, I just want to let y'all know that I love my mama dearly. I love y'all dearly too. And um, I know y'all thought I was going to get up here and say something else, didn't you? I know. <laughs> but I'm shaking. I guess that's God. <laughs> I ain't cussed damn time, Pastor. <laughs> 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 But, but again, y'all, I do appreciate y'all back there in the back. I thank y'all for coming. Everybody, I see y'all. That's why I walked in before them, because I wanted to see. I'm sorry, because I'm probably the first one to leave, too. Uh-huh. But um, anyways, thank y'all again for coming. They got their food back there. Y'all pray over twice. And um, always, you know, you don't know. Just pray. Okay? Uh, pastor going to pray over, too, though. So that's going to be three times. Um. These colors look good on y'all, don't it? Yeah, we did a good job. Me and my sister did a great job. We really did. Um, but anyways, I'm going to get out the mic. I, I was trying to get my time in because my Aunt Pat got up here acting like she was preaching. Like, this is not your sermon, okay? But anyways, Pastor, you still get up here and do what you're supposed to do, even though, you know, she tried to take over, <laughs> trying to join members. Y'all all better have church homes. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what's up. If y'all don't, Christ Nations is the one to come to. Understand? All right. I'm at this thing. This is my Uncle Charles Ray Jr., the first. It's the same thing, man. Senior. Let's give it on to God, the pastor, friend. Um, I got four. I said, I have four sisters. I am the thumb. And I believe like that women can do anything. And I base that upon my own. Because my four sisters, and I do have brothers and sisters, but they wasn't born in the same pod. But I love them all. And they used to bathe me. And I used to sleep with the <laughs> little boy growing up. So, uh, 
didn't really know no better, but all of a sudden, one night I went to the we got in the bed, and this this guy was in there, so he had me on the bed, and he said, man, I looked this stuff, and, and he, what, what's the matter? And so, he looked and stuff, and I looked at him and stuff, and he looked like he was out of place, so I lay over and play like I'm asleep, then I pop back up. You know, so, but anyway, I was in the way and stuff, and uh, uh, and I really didn't know. So, but my mama, she always taught me that I, because I could have went to the left instead of to the right, been around all the women. But, and so, one Easter, uh, my mama had bought my sister a can can. So I asked, I call my mama big girl. I said, Mama, did you buy me a can can? She said, No, son. Little boys don't wear a can can. But my mama taught me and raised me to be the man that she wanted me to be. She taught me not to lie. Don't lie. And people don't believe the truth no how, so why lie? So I just tell you the truth and let you deal with it. It's not going to change. My mama broke me from running. I don't run from no man. I fear no man. And the only woman that I feared was my mama. So if I didn't run from her, I'm not going to run from you. And if you push that button and the door open, you're not going to stand in front of a train and try to stop it. And you're not going to try to stand in front of a tornado and stop it either. The best thing for you to do is get out the way because it's not going to be good. It's not going to end. So one day my mom was gonna beat me. So I'm gonna get to her too. And I was running. And I had an auntie and uh I ran by a house and stuff and she said, uh, Lord, why are you running? I said, Mama gonna whoop me and then mama come and she said, Yeah, I ain't gonna tell you what she said, but when I catch him, you know, <laughs> but she never would have caught me. I still would have been running today. She never would have called me. But she taught me not to run, and she taught me not to lie. And she also taught me not to mistreat somebody else's daughter. And if you feel that you are around any woman in front of me, I'm not going to like it. So growing up, this one, I got four in this pod. I got some in the other part also. I love all my sisters and brothers and sisters. But this one, growing up with her, she worse them. Her thumb stuff, because she come and get on you and start sucking her thumb and stuff and get all up on you. And she wasn't going to take the last lick. <laughs> this girl would whoop the average man. She would. She would. She would. You know, but that's just the way she was. But growing up, um, you had to watch it. You couldn't get into something. You couldn't get into something. So I never will forget the time. Uh, we had an invitation. I don't remember what time it was. And uh, I walked in one day and said, Mama, I want to go out with you. And she said, Mama, you can't go out with me. I said, Why not? She said, Well, you know, I think you would like me. So, But I brought all of that on myself. <laughs> so we were having a great time. We got drunk. We forgot the whole thing. We got to it. And so I told my mama, I need to come out with you. And she said, Mama, you got to come out with me. I said, Mama, I don't want to come out with you. Oh, 
sponsor. Thank you, baby. She's overdoing it. My sister, she was like, man, 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 she was like, man,
Good morning. Pastor of this fine church members. My name is Donna Collins. This is a service and celebration. Cheryl was a beautiful, beautiful person. She um she had our Cheryl K came. We call her Cheryl Cherry K. Cherry K came and showed out. She had all of us laughing. And uh, at the end of the class reunion, Cheryl got a bag, and got all the peppermint candies. And I took them with me. I said, Bye, Cheryl. But I was so elated that she came. You never know. The word ample means a lot, too much, a lot of time. We don't have a lot of time. And so she came, and we were just all, and, and Roland Hamilton, he's not with us uh, this morning because he had something to do, but he actually bought her, and God is just good all the time. If you give him the praises, he'll open them doors. And so he has. And so I am the president of the class of 76 uh, year person, and um, I have um, Andre Mathis, Pamela Williams, Fran Troy, and Roland Hamilton. And so I'm going to share this with you. Remember their beautiful song. God gives every person their own unique song. It's one that will play their entire life long. So the love that they give and the gifts that they share, so the memories they make and the dreams that they have. It's a song filled with beauty and a day-to-day -day grace that plays through until they see God face to face. A song that is heard in the heart loud and clear. A song, if we listen, will always stay clear. With a beautiful way to celebrate them is the song that Cheryl lives. The song you'll ever carry in your heart. From Cynthia and Cheryl, the Diallo class of night. To God be the glory for all that he has done. Come on, let's give God a great big hand clap of praise. You know, they on the program, they, uh, they have Wayne Monroe. If they had said Kenneth Monroe, I, I might have been all prim and proper. But they said Wayne, so I'm acting like Wayne today. Uh, Sister Greer, I need you on stage, please. Patricia Greer, Sister Deborah Denise, I need you on stage. Sister Tina Greer, I need you on stage. Hey, is Joy, is Joy here? Joy, Tiffany, come on Tiffany. Nicholas, Nicholas, I need you up here. Sherry 
had a very unique voice. Scratchy and and and, and different. I would put Sherry's voice up against anybody I know. She may not win. She may not win. But I ain't, I'm sure I ain't scared to put her up against you. You sure have to beat her. That was a bad soprano right there. That girl was bad. I almost had like Charles then, but I felt it from my heart. You, you have to know how to sing now, sing, Sherry. If you know what I'm talking about. Whoa, we come, we come. And we are leaning, oh yes we are. And we are trusting. He never failed me yet, oh Lord. Can you help me sing, oh? Come on, do yourself a favor and just lift your hands and give God some praise in this place this morning. Come on, lift your voice and your hands and give him praise and thanksgiving because he is good. He is great and greatly to be praised. Father, we honor you. We bless you. 
for you do all things well. Hallelujah. He is so good. So, so good. I, um, I tell you, my job is easy now. Because they have so beautifully eulogized this woman of God. And uh, it is a blessing to be able to stand here and discharge my duty uh, to you to offer, by way of the Spirit of God, His Word. To lift your heart and for you to understand and to grasp, uh, in some ways, what has happened for our beloved sister. You know, whenever we gather for times like this, it is quite common and quite natural for the mind to drift onto our own mortality. And it's quite common for us to gather in this place and when we come together with family and friends to be a, a light and a shoulder to cry on for them. It is quite common for us to sometimes bring with us this sense of being forlorn or saddened or burdened because of the occasion that brings us here together. But the Word of God says that precious in the eyes of the Lord is the transition of his saints. Precious. That means valuable. So what we pull out a hanky over, the angels sing about. You know, I'm reminded of what Jesus taught in the scripture when he said that the angels of heaven rejoice over one sinner that repents. That when one sinner walking the earth finds Jesus as Savior and Lord and accepts him and says yes to him, all of heaven erupts in celebration. Those were the words of Jesus. So they're not metaphorical, they're not theoretical, they're not philosophical, they are absolute. They are true. So therefore, if every sinner that comes to salvation creates a party in heaven, what do you think happens when one of those who is born again walks through the gate and comes home? Peter says in his second letter that there is granted unto the child of God an abundant entrance into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So child of God, know this, that there is reason for you to be sorrowful because your covenant with your sister is broken in the earth. But just know where she is today. She gets to sing with that electrifying soprano without limit. She gets to open her mouth and express her love for God in a way that she was never able to do while here. You know, a lot of times, and, and I'll say this because I think it is appropriate and I'm going to take you to the scripture and I won't be before you long. Oftentimes, we are in the church, all of us are recipients of salvation. And we know that salvation is by grace through faith. We know that salvation is not predicated upon our works. It's not predicated upon dotting the I's and crossing the T's. But it's very common for us when it comes to times like this that we start thinking about the I's and the T's in our own life and the I's and the T's of those who go before us. But if salvation is by grace through faith, then we recognize we should lean heavily upon what Jesus has done and not upon what we have done or not done. And so it is always an occasion to celebrate those who have made Jesus Lord. And let me show you why. In the first letter to the Corinthians, the Apostle Paul writes something that is profound. We've understood it at a surface level, but we need to understand it a little deeper. In chapter 6 and verse 19, he says what? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. For you have been or are bought with the price. Say, there was a price paid for me. Say that with me. Say, there was a price paid for me. You are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body 
and in your spirit, which are God's. Now, when you couple this statement with another profound thing that Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it brings us into an understanding that is pertinent for us today. In 1 Corinthians 15 and 19, he says this simple statement. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Now, why would Paul say that? Because Paul is writing to a church in which they are being challenged by doubters who are telling them there is no such thing as the resurrection. It does not exist, and it is not for you. And Paul begins to write to them and tell them that if there is no resurrection, then Christ has not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is vain, and we're still in our sins. But he said, Christ has risen. And he then pins this one line. He said, because gentlemen, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, this life will we battle with our flesh, battle with our appetites, battle with our attitudes, battle with this fallen nature. If here we only have hope in Christ, we're of all men most miserable. We're to be pitied because we're believing something that only works here what we have our battles. We're believing in something that only works here what we have our struggles. We're believing in something that only works here what we never fully, truly experience all that God has for us. But child of God, I came to tell you that you've been bought with a price. And that price that was paid for you, what the scripture says, didn't just purchase your spirit. So I don't just get born again on this side and I have to fight the devil and fight the world and fight the flesh. And then when I die, that's all that there is. No, he actually purchased my body too. And because he purchased my body, this same body, you're going to see again. This same body will be joined with resurrected spirit and you will see her again. These same hands you will hold again. And that same electrifying soprano you will hear again. Because God has made the way for us to experience total salvation in this life and the next. So we are encouraged by Scripture not to look at Sister Cheryl as dead. Oh, I know it's a paradigm shift. I know it shakes your thinking. But she is not dead. She's more alive now than you. Because she's no longer tied to a body that won't let her spirit be all that God created it to be. She's no longer tied to a flesh with all of its appetites and all of the wars of the adversary. But now she's free. She's free to sing the song of the Lord. She's free to dance before the Lord. And then one day God's going to give her that body back. And he's going to give some upgrades to it. And he's going to add some glory to it. And he's going to join it with a born-again spirit. And she is going to be the Cheryl that you never knew in totality. And so we don't gather here today to sorrow as those who have no hope. We have an expectation. And I know that every time in life, you see, you have to understand something. When Paul says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we're of all men most miserable, miserable, you have to ask yourself the question. He's also talking about good. That means if you did dot all the I's, if you did cross all the T's, if you did live like you were supposed to, if you did do everything right, if you did walk in all of the blessing, if you did receive all of the grace, if this is all there is to it, you would still be miserable. You see, there is an inheritance waiting, the child of God, that you can't get here. So all of us will have the same opportunity as our beloved sister to put this temple off so that we may receive the fullness of our inheritance. The Bible tells us in Psalms 90 and 12, teach us, O Lord, to number our days that my heart may gain wisdom. You see, whenever we think we're invincible, when we think we'll live forever, that's when we live reckless. 
But when you learn to number your days and you learn to value your time here, you live that way. You understand the value of living for God and for God alone. Now, if the scripture tells me to number my days, what does that tell me? It tells me this, anything I can number is coming to an end. Anything I can number is not meant to be permanent. Anything I can number must come to a close. And so he says, this time that we experience here that we like to hold on to so tightly, we should actually hold loosely. You, saw, you see, the old saints used to say it this way, don't let this world get too custom fitted. You got to wear it like a loose garment. You can't allow this world and all that is offered to you in this life to be what you hold on to. No, 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 no. You see, this is why I say we have to celebrate what has happened here because she has seen now what she used to have to accept by faith. She gets to hold now what she could only, um, what she used to stand in the choir and sing about, she gets to see. And for that we rejoice because our God is faithful and he does all things well. Deuteronomy 29 and 29, and I leave you with this, says that the secret things belong to the Lord. But those things that are revealed belong unto us and our children after us. Every life, hear me, child of God, and may this give you comfort and peace. Every life, there are things that are revealed that we all know about. Every life. There are things in your life, your family, they know all about it. Your friends, they know all about it. There are things in every life that are revealed. Your church might know about it. Your, your classmates may know about it. The people you work with may know about it. But then there are secret things that nobody knows anything about. And the Bible says they belong to the Lord. Oh, and may I posit to you this day that regardless of what you think you knew about Cheryl K. Johnson, those things that were revealed you may have known. But there are secret things between her and the Lord that you will never know anything about. And that's why when the eclipse was coming on Monday, she could say to the whole audience, I'm going to fly away. Because see, you didn't know it. But she knew it. Because the Lord is faithful to his children. He is not slack concerning his promise. His watchfulness over us, no matter who we are and what we think we've done, his love is everlasting. And he holds those secret things in his heart about all of his children. And so, child of God, I want you to rejoice in knowing this woman of God is with her Savior. Just as sure as she confessed him as Lord, just as sure as she sung his song. Just as sure as she prayed the prayer, she is now with him in spirit and in truth. Because the things you knew were the things revealed. But it's the secret things that took her to glory. So I say to the family, I say to this family, rejoice. Lift up the heads that hang down. Mika Crystal. Your mother is with the Lord. She is rejoicing with the Lord. To this family that is so rich in spiritual inheritance. I listen to you sing. I've watched you guys since I was a little boy. Seen it. So real, I know. So rich. So real. Hear me. What God has invested in you is priceless. And for the days ahead, rejoice with one another. Celebrate with one another. Bring out the best in each other. Speak to the God in each other. And allow him to be big in you. Because you too one day will have your moment where you must put off your tent and you get to join Cheryl in that heavenly choir. Praise the Lord. At this time, I want to pray for the family, and I want you to join with me. Father, we thank you.
for the peace of God that passes all understanding. We thank you for the joy that is unspeakable and full of glory that gives us strength. Father, I pray for this family that they would take refuge in every promise, that they would take refuge in your presence. And Father, for every heart that is struggling and wrestling to reconcile this moment, I pray that your peace would rush into that heart, rush into that mind, steady that heart, steady those thoughts, arrest them so that they would know the peace and salvation of you and you alone, Lord. Father, let them know your grace and your peace in the days ahead. That as they walk through this season of transition, they will remember the good and not the bad. And they will know that the secret things belong unto you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And everybody said amen, amen. and amen. And at this time, we are in the hands of the funeral directors in charge.